got it. Hi, everybody. This is Hal. Welcome to our next live discussion with Andrew. Uh, Andrew Sandler, who is our aquarist extraordinaire du jour, <laughs> actually forever. Hello, Andrew. How are you? Let's start off and just say hello. Hi, everybody. I'm doing just fine here. It's been a hell of a couple of weeks. That's uh, it's it's it, it's it's weird how when we when we sit down and talk about doing another live feed into the community or onto the podcast, um, it's like the the events build up and we've got so much to talk about. So some some of it's painful, some of it's good, some of it's exciting, but all of it's uh, to help each other get through all of it. Okay, so yeah, we still, we're, we're breaking some big news here tonight. So uh, yes. I saved, I saved all the stuff. I haven't posted in a while. And by the way, just so everybody knows, I am on a 48-hour uh, comment ban from Facebook. I'm in Facebook jail for fighting with the uh, AMC apes. And um, uh, so if you want to get to me, messenger me. I can't. My Facebook is out. That will, if Andrew behaves himself, that will resolve itself within the next day or so. We're trying to keep our buddy out of jail is what we're doing. Uh, Shelly says, hey. Roland says, hey. Uh, Tracy says, hey to both of us. Hi, guys. So anyway, if you're listening now, um, feel free. If you have a question, go ahead and put it in a comment under the live video, and we will address your questions or comments as we have time. Okay, where do you want to start, buddy? Let's see. It's been about two weeks. Um, you introduced New Coral since then. What? Let's start with that. Um, how many people are on, Hal? Four four million eight hundred thousand. Four point eight million, huh? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I can't tell at the moment. Um, for I think we have fifteen people commenting, so it's growing rapidly. But remember. People will be replaying this, you know, while when we're retired with our feet up in Boca drinking pina coladas, there's going to be people here on this page replaying this. So, yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just trying to time when I break these news events. <laughs> OK, so. Uh, um, what... All right. So so uh, let's start in chronological order. Let's start okay. with, uh, about two weeks ago. We uh, we cleared the bullpen uh, out of system four or five in quarantine, and there were some banded angels, two small bandits, I believe they were female, and Casper and Dash, which which were the uh, ghost and uh, and Miss Mark bandits, along with the three personatus angels and my sunrise hog. The baby personatus angels went upstairs into my office and uh, in the cubes and the uh, Abai angels and the uh, Ventralis Amphius and the Hawaiian Amphius all went into the 200 cube downstairs. That was a big day. Um, it literally cleared out the bullpen. Uh, there was a blue face angel in there also that we, we had. So, um, the two, the, I was nervous about two things with that. One was, um, I thought the blue face was a little shy and I was worried about him getting beaten up by mm -hmm. other angels, the, uh, the, the Emperor Angularis. Turns out that was not a problem. The second thing I was worried about, and I don't know if you guys Elliot Lim knows, but if, unless you keep multiple banded angels, you don't know. They are extremely monogamous, uh, extremely territorial. They do not like threesomes or swaps or or uh, or any monkey business. And so, right away, we saw major aggression going after Casper and Desh. Those are the new guys. As you know, I pulled Casper uh, out of the tank. Unfortunately, he passed about two days later. 
the 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 beating and the bruising was too much, and I lo lost the one and only ghost band. The other guys are doing okay, um, but that sort of that that sort of hurts. Mm -hmm. uh, that's sort of round one of the hurt. Then uh, we got a bunch of new fish in quarantine. We got a bunch of anthias and a bunch of black tangs. Uh, Squanapinus anthias, nothing fancy. And literally all the females, all the females of the Squanapinus came down with urinomia and basically all died. The males survived. We sterilized the tank. Uh, we got a new batch of females. We moved the males over. And that stabilized. That's good. We then got uh, about three huge black tangs and a bunch of red leopard wrasses called chayote wrasses. And I mistakenly put those wrasses in copper. And within two days, I lost all four chayote wrasses. Uh, there are certain fish that just can't handle meds at all. They're one of them. So I have another brilliant idea to order another four more and keep them in a system with no meds. They all died. Um, I'm, I'm for sure thinking that whoever held them I know who it was, it was uh, sea dwelling creatures, the wholesalers probably had them in copper also. And by the time I get them, their insides already melted out. So I lost eight red, red leopard wrasses and that hurt all in quarantine. Uh, and the news gets worse from there. About uh, Five days after Casper gets pulled, remember we've added some coral, we've added some new fish, quarantined all the new fish, um, didn't see anything on the new fish. Certainly they're white, you can miss something on a white fish. So I'll announce it right now. Uh, we have a case of cryptocarin ick or something like it in the display tank right now, as we speak. And it's, uh, I wouldn't call it a bad case, but it's the typical one where the Achilles are affected, the powder blues are affected, some of the uh, smoothest skin uh, fish like uh, tile fish, I can see them acting very different, scratching. So we've been managing an ick issue in the display tank while the coral is there, which is always interesting. Uh, first question somebody's gonna ask me is how did this get by you? And I wish I had a fish that stood up and raised their hand and said, I'm the guilty party. They don't. I have no idea if it was introduced as a cyst or something like that on a piece of coral, or it came from, uh, the fish that were added. Or there's another theory that this is a new parasite from Tahiti, which is a smaller type of parasite. I know Elliot Lim has been dealing with it. Uh, and it was actually transferred from the black tang tank somehow. Uh, <coughs> some sort of, you know, in air transfer or contamination with Gelson's hands or who knows. Mm -hmm. So um, some of you might know what, what are we trying to do about it? Uh, I would say maybe only about five, 10% of the fish are affected. But nevertheless, we're cranking up the ozone. Um, 
we're calibrating the ozone probes like every two or three days. So I make sure I'm not over ozoning. We have added diatomaceous earth diatom powder to the pool filter. We um, I've ordered new UV bulbs. I was due to change them at Christmas, but so happens that uh, the company William Lim, who makes the UV, sold his company and doesn't quite know where his inventory is. And it's a new guy has it, and so we're trying to track down. New UV bulbs. <laughs> um, today, we actually made a gelatin, a gelatin pie with the, what's the name of that stuff? The Missouri, Missouri vegetarian powder in a jello. And we added some CP to the, to the jello. She wants to go out there. CP and Metro to the to the to the Jello, and we're probably going to feed the fish the Jello. Although I've been warned that feeding CP to fish can be deadly. I've calculated the around the amount of dose that people recommend. It's a few uh, few grams in a huge pie, but we shall see. I mean, these are all things that we're doing, and. Uh, in the meantime, we have backup plans starting. Uh, one that pulls the fish and treats them in the 2,500 gallon tank. I guess we would move them there at, in the quarantine room. Or the easier way, probably pull the corals and treat the display tank with chloroquine phosphate. Trying to not let it get to that point. Uh, so far, we have not had that issue, but Backup plans are, are being made. So it's one, of, it's one of the worst two week periods I've I've been through with the tank. Mm. Um, just knowing that uh, that might happen is is a, is very stressful. In the meantime, Michelle made a dive today. We actually added a few pieces of coral. We were like, "What's the difference? If we're going to pull the coral, we're going to pull the coral. It's been, it's been an extra five minutes." Uh, it's not just the coral. We got to pull the urchin, pull the snails, probably up the siphon, the sand. Uh, it's a it's a major undertaking if we treat the display tank. I'd rather not do it. Yeah, you're taking it one step at a time. It's like I think you know everybody. Everybody's commenting how how upsetting it is, how supportive they are, how understanding they are, how grateful they are that you're sharing it because it. It helps them with their tanks and their situations feel like they're not unique in yeah, going through I mean, negative well, experiences. Seen everything, everything was now apparently this Tahitian, this Tahitian bug is copper resistant. So you know, there's a shot that that happens. Um, there's a chance that it had nothing to do with that, and it was something else. Uh, I have no idea. I think the way around it is chloroquine phosphate and um, a lower dose for a longer period of time is what I'm being told. Mm -hmm. Somebody mentioned that that particular uh, medicine in, in one of the in one of the chats, but it went pretty quick. So yeah, I got tons of it, and, and I'm ready to deal with it. But I'd have to pull the coral, pull all the inverts, and set up a light system and all that stuff. And, in the meantime, I'm trying to ozone it out. I'm trying to diatom it out. I'm trying to, uh, we're feeding the fish tons of salcon and vitamin nori, I'm trying to feed it out and do everything in my, my ability not to get to that point. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I mean, I'll say, I'll speak for the fish <laughs> if that's even possible. I'd say, I, there couldn't be a better set of hands caring for these amazing creatures than you, Andrew. The, the love and caring and concern Thanks. and money you dump into taking care of these little puppies is, yeah. is I mean, the, unparalleled. I, see, I actually see the cleaner asses going at it very hard. They are working hard. A lot more fish are being clean. Um, I see a bunch of tile fish that don't act right. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I don't see anything on her skin, but Michelle dove today and said she sees it under the water. Mm. I see the pad of blues have those little bumps under the skin. That's typical of Krypton. So I, I, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm gonna try to burn it out and not and not do this, but but we'll see what we have to. I have not lost any fish yet. Somebody's asking about the Picasso. I no no dots on him at all. I see him getting cleaned more often, but I don't see anything on him. Mm -hmm. Somebody some somebody mentioned contacting a local aquarium. I know you have an association with the the amazing Long Island Aquarium. Uh, to do what? To house? Um, Jonathan has a warehouse with a with a huge pool. We can use. We're, we're talking about that. Um, we also uh, my twenty five hundred gallon tank could be temporarily set up with a VFD. I pulled one VFD for you know we have spare. I can run a pump. I can hang a light from the, uh, or a couple of lights, if there's no coral in this tank and put the coral in the 2500. So, so we have, uh, we have some plans if we need to be. Uh, and, and it's all happening before Christmas vacation, which, which really, which really sucks. Um, so who, who the is- that, The fish that are in the quarantine, I'm not gonna put them in this tank down. There's no reason to stress out and put new fish in the tank. Yeah. So everything in the back is on hold. I'm not going to put the urchins in. I, you know, a bunch of things I'm not going to do. I'm just going to watch this thing and hopefully it'll burn itself out. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of people had mentioned that time will, time will, when you handle it right, time will let it burn itself out. They had yeah, actually literally yeah, used that term. There's a, good, there's a good shot of that. And, uh, the issue is whether I want to try feeding the chloroquine and the metro in the food. That's, that's, uh, I made a really big pie today with Yeltsin Jello. Uh, it's about 225 grams of the uh, gelatin from one of the companies, a vegetarian blend, mm -hmm. Missouri. And we added about four grams of CP to it. Uh, about the same as Metro also. And uh, I don't know, that's, a, that's another choice. We got that ready to go also if we need. Whew. It's a lot, man. <laughs> I would love some new UV bulbs, by the way. That, I think that would solve a lot. I was due to change them anyway. It's been a year. Um, they were on schedule to be changed during Christmas vacation. And then this company goes and gets sold. Now, is there is there another resource for them? I don't. I, we don't think so. But um, I'm told there is an inventory. It's just moved to a different state, and they need to be in touch. I'm reading. I'm reading the comments. And, and then, and then there's the post from last night, which aggravated me. And let me just say yeah. outright here that, that I'd rather not talk specifics. I'd rather not talk about it at all. I'm sure it's going to come up. Uh, at least 25 people have contacted me via messenger or on my posts. Uh, I can't contact you back for 48 hours because of the ban, but I can message you, messenger you. And, uh, you know, the same story has been going around for years. It's not shocking to anybody. Apparently, I don't know why I was the first one to come out over this. Apparently, uh, whatever. But it is what it is. And uh, there's really not much more to the story other than I told on the post. I have the ICP machine, just not a lot of the parts to make it work. And, and frankly, the ICP machine is the least of what I need right now. I can use some UV bulbs and some, and some sterilization. <laughs> so if, yeah, if, any, if anybody listening has a, has a garage full of UV bulbs, send a direct message to Andrew's page. And, yeah, uh, yeah, I need 10 <laughs> 350-watt bulbs. 
<laughs> I'll check my stock, but I don't think I have any personally. Um, yeah, the uh, somebody mentioned about the, the post from yesterday and did it cause your restriction? And the answer is no. It has nothing to do with it. It's just the, bad the timing. The restriction was a stock market thing. And I am openly and outward shorting stocks that these crazy retail, retail, uh, they call themselves apes. And they post things that the stock is going to squeeze. And sometimes I answer them back and I get a little uh, crazy on them. And, and uh, this time I called them, uh, I call them, what was the word I used? Pompous, pompous apes. And Facebook banned me for that. The, those of you that are making comments about the bolts in the live feed, um that the the feed is going by pretty quickly so if you if you actually do have bulbs that you think andrew would work for him just send just send a direct message to the page and i believe andrew you can comment still at you can still receive messaging in the page am i correct i can yeah the message the messenger app works yeah okay good all right so if anybody has uh uv uh, uv bulb information please send it through the page in a direct yeah, these message were, these were William Lim uh products they're uh 10 bulbs apparently you sold the company we just found out so uh roland wants to know about phoebe's doghouse tank <laughs> phoebe's got no parasites <laughs> i uh, hope not she's great and um i made her my background you see she's in my yeah, background yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's great uh what else can I tell you? I mean, it's, it's been a hell of a couple of weeks between the loss of the band. Now, thank God my cubes, you know, some of these fish were in the same system as these other fish, my little baby personatus mm -hmm. and the Abai angels, they have nothing on them. So I'm a little suspect of that theory that it actually happened in the quarantine system. How something gets, the, you know, maybe there's something, maybe they, there, there is an ick parasite that lasts longer than six weeks. Maybe a cyst was on a rock or a piece of coral that needed seven or 72 days. Who, who knows how this stuff happens? Somebody wants to, has a question. Can you comment on the coral, cor, coral quarantine lights and the photo period when introducing new corals? Yeah, we, we, we've been keeping the coral fishless for at least six weeks in a vat with uh, radions on them and feeding them phosphate nitrate uh, for some nutrients and keeping the uh, alk stable and feeding some, you know, plankton type stuff. And they've done fine in the vats. It's been just a waiting game. And, you know, mm -hmm. we set our we set our calendars for forty five days, and I called Michelle up and I'm saying I'm ready for a dive. Somebody says they let them follow for ninety eight days, and another person questioned could it develop through food, which I think you might have mentioned earlier. Uh, ninety eight days. There's evidence of of one strain of seventy two days but it was at lower temperature supposedly i never heard 98 but you know what i i i believe every i believe anything and everything in this and there's not enough research to know um there's too many variables there's, pl there's plenty of people that leave their tanks fallow for the 72 days and that fails so so these are all it could be a cystic thing in, inside a pocket that's anaerobic you have no idea. Nobody stands up and says, I'm the guilty one. Right. Um, the, fish are, the fish and corals are in the very best hands. It just goes to show anything can happen in the hobby, no matter what you do as a preventative. That's from Tracy. And that's the sad reality of it. You know, we're, we're, deal, we're dealing, with, dealing with live beings here. And, you know, you, I don't know if you can see. Can you see the... Uh, the, the big Picasso being cleaned right now. Let me see if I can show it to you. Can you see him being cleaned right now? Yep. Yep. 
And the rack's on them right now. See? Yep. And that goes on all day now with the clean of rasses. What do you, Andrew, Aaron wants to know what you consider your, we've, we, it's funny, we ask this question at every live and every event we do, we always ask it because it's a, it's a natural question that people want to know. And I also wanted to know it. What's, what's your, what's your, your, your most beautiful fish? What's, what's that one? And, and it's funny as time goes on, you're and I'll and I don't know I don't remember your specific answers, Andrew. But over time, your answer has changed. I think over time, it, it, it's it's always the one you can't replace. Yeah, yeah. It's it was for, for a few weeks. It was the Picasso, right? I mean, right. And and and, and then, then I'm upset about the Ghost Bandit now. Yeah. Right. Um, it's always the one you can't replace. Uh, People are voting for the Picasso. Uh, 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 the Picasso's, I mean, that's, that's, that's probably not replaceable. And I'm watching him very carefully for any kind of sign of docs or heavy breathing. I don't see any issue with him. Uh, you know, it's the typical ick magnets that, that, that got it. It's, it's the, the Achilles, the powder blues, uh, and the uh, softer, velvety, Kind of uh, scale fish. That that's that's who got this thing so far. Tile fish are bothered by it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what would suck more: moving the fish to the twenty five hundred gallon tank and knocking them all out and going diving for all of them and actually keeping the tank fishless, which would be hard because there's got to be probably one fish like a. Some watchman goby that's under some rock or something. Mm -hmm. um, you'd probably have to knock them out with some meds or something, or to move the coral. And, and I would think the coral and the urchins and the snails would be easier, but I, I don't think either either of them are good choices. Right. But yeah, you, you actually have a couple of you have a couple of ways to deal with it before you get to that point. Those are yeah. almost they're like they're pretty much like viable last resorts at this point yeah 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 um what else i mean uh, i got my ozone we just calibrated the probes today i crank in my ozone we're putting that diatomaceous earth powder in, in the pool filter which is filters to one micron just to capture some free swimmers but, but uh i i don't know if any of this stuff makes a difference or not yeah, somebody, a couple of people mentioned, I, I, it passed by a few minutes ago, somebody just mentioned, have you thought about pulling, you know, the, the worst of the worst possible fish and, you know, QT them for now and, and see if that, see if you can attack the, the display tank after that and see what yeah, happens. Michelle, Michelle went after a few fish today, that, a couple of the Achilles and with two nets mm. and was unsuccessful. These fish are healthy eating and, and diving around. Like, it's not easy to get them either. No. <laughs> it's not like they walk and, sitting and the there reason waiting. why we wanted, the reason why I went after the Achilles was I wanted a scraping done. You know, we have a, a vet that would do the scraping. Uh, and uh, actually, now, now that I'm thinking about it, I mean, we lost Matt Farini from TSM. He, he would normally come here and, and do that for me with a scope. And, and he just passed away. Uh, we have somebody else. That would do it, but we couldn't even get the freaking fish. And the only thing I really want to know is it really traditional trip to Karen, or is this this new Tahitian bug? Somebody asked about that earlier. About what, what do you know about the Tahitian bug? Somebody uh, asked about that. I know it's I know it's copper resistant. I know it's a little smaller in in, in shape and size. Uh, when I sent the video to Elliot Lim today, it was too hard to tell the these. Achilles fly by, like, mm -hmm. you know, and you know what, at the end of the day, it's probably going to have to be chloroquine anyway, so it doesn't matter, in my opinion, but I really would have liked the scraper. Mm -hmm. Now, what the chloroquine is going to do to the amphius and the rasses, that's a whole other story, which is why I really wanted to know if it was just regular ick. Then maybe I can pull the fish and treat the proper fish in in 
in copper and other ones in chloroquine. Uh, if it's the Tahitian bug, we're gonna have to probably pull the coral and use the CP on the whole display tank at just the lower dose. And, and if, it, if you did that, if you pulled all the coral and, and did the entire display with a lower dose, how long would it have to stay like that until things were quote, back to normal, unquote? So normally chloroquine in the display tank is risky to begin with because you can't test it and you're sort of flying blind, although we've got a, uh, a lab to give us a UV spectrometer so we know the degradation. I don't have it with me, but we have access to it. Uh, it would be at least 30 some odd days. And according to Elliot Lim, it may have to go to 50, 60 days. No, no one knows anything about this, this new Tahitian bone, zero. And, uh, and, no, and, I know he's dealt with it in, in his display tank with the bandits. And, and is it viable for the coral to be outside of this display for 60 days? With the right skimmer and the right lights. Um, and I would probably have to feed it the same way in the vats, you know, with, with phosphate and nitrate. I, I could get it done. It would not be pretty, but I could get it done. Anthony wants to know if you can put the system in hypo salinity, hypo I, low salinity. I, I, I could do that, but I would still have to remove the coral anyway. Yeah, uh, Roland just said the same thing. <laughs> I would have to remove the coral and, and all the uh, all the inverts. I would have a better shot with the anthias and stuff like that. And I would love to know if it was traditional cryptocarin, I would maybe even consider that instead of the chloroquine phosphate, which is why I wanted that scraping. Big picture. Is this a bump in the road or a major pothole? What's where are we at here? I'll let you know in a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, you got yeah. Um, uh, I had to ask, you know. So now somebody had mentioned um, the aquarium. You're like a little miniature Long Island aquarium, you know. Do they go through these same kind of things? I would have you know, to assume they do, right? At some I, point. I mean, Joe Yayulo uh, is redoing his tank right now. I, I don't think he's quarantining as hard as I am. I, I can't imagine that 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 this doesn't happen. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, this is one of those things that that you ask yourself before you start putting your coral, like. Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Because, because if there was no coral in here, I would just grab my kilo of chloroquine phosphate and, I, and just dump the freaking thing in. Syed said, you're an educated betting guy. Knowing that we won't, knowing that we won't know much about the Tahiti bug, what would you do if it was not your tank? That's a wow question. I, 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 I'm going to go in this order. Feed with vitamins. Diatom powder, ozone, change my UV bulbs. Then the next option to feed medicated stuff. And then the last option to decide whether I pull fish or, or coral. Um, so now I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, you know, Andrew, that, I, that I'm a, I'm a good community manager. I'm a good talker. I love yeah. interviewing people. I'm not a fish expert. So sometimes I'll ask questions that are like 400 miles below, you know, your experience. So how it, it's, it's baffling from an amateur, totally amateur point of view that, that says we have. We have a display here that has coral in it and all sorts of coral, invertebrates and all sorts of fish. And they live, they live together in the ocean. You know where I'm so, going so with the, why, the, the, why, why is it so unique here? It's, it's unique because you got a round, 
a typical system, 100, 200 gallon tank or 50, 80 gallon tank, taking out all the fish and, and putting them somewhere and leaving the tank fallow for a few months, right? Mm -hmm. Is not a big deal. Go chase 500 fish in a 17,000 gallon tank. That, that's the big deal. Yeah. Um, and, and making sure that it's 100% fallow when there might be some little watchman go be somewhere underneath some rock. So that, that's the big issue. Uh, and we can drain the tank down big time, halfway. We can knock the fish out with a drug. Um, there are ways of doing it. And uh, Jonathan and I and Michelle are talking about it. Hopefully, we don't have to act on it. Oh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, we all, we're all there with you. Literally. Yeah. We're, we're, we are, I mean, and, and that goes for a whole lot more people than are on that are, that, that, are, that are watching this live or watching yeah, the look, replay. I'm looking at a pot of blue now that has those little bumps under the skin. You guys know those bumps. <laughs> <sighs> Sean said, get all the cucumbers out. Start pulling one out every time you see one. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's uh, I I can I can equate that with a little personal experience. I used I was breeding these electric blue freshwater crayfish. It's just as blue as your as as blue can be. I love them, and they breed like in their sleep. I had hundreds and hundreds of them. I was giving them away to all the local kids in the aquarium yeah. locally and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I was I was moving all of them from one tank to uh, from one fifty five to a seventy five, and. I'm getting I'm over two days, right? I got the new tank ready. The old tank's going to get cleaned out. I'm going to redo it and repurpose it. So I get all of the crayfish out. I think I get all the rocks out, all the display stuff out, all the plants out. I got all the crayfish out. I have about maybe an inch of water left in the tank. And three little miniature electric blue crayfish were hiding in the gravel right. for days. I didn't see them. But I, I caught them in time, but and, and so that's in a little bitty seventy-five gallon tank in a seventeen thousand. There's got to be whole families hiding in there that you haven't seen that you just don't recognize. That's a, that's a big problem, along with, um, you know, you, you know, this fallow stuff. Keeping it fallow, if it's the Titian bump, nobody knows what the fallow period is. We have no idea, zero. Second thing is, you know how many times that fails on people? Because there's a cyst somewhere in the tank that, that stays and erupts after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, it's not and you're back to square one again. Yeah, so it's not foolproof to begin with. So um, I think my, and by the way, treating a display tank with meds like chloroquine phosphate, because you don't know your levels and the biodegradation and like that's not foolproof either. Mm -hmm. The last time I went through something like this, I actually did both. I did the chloroquine phosphate for over 30 some odd days, and then I went hypo for another 30 days to really kill it. Just got to move all the coral if that's the case. And, and then you kill anthias and you kill rasses with the chloroquine while, while you're doing it. Our friend TN wants to know what temperature the display is at. 77 and change. Somebody said call Pfizer. Call Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's actually. Uh, whoever comes up. It's an interesting idea, true, you know, if you think about it. <laughs> whoever comes up with a real true parasite killer that's reef safe is going to be a multi 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 millionaire in this in this world mm -hmm. hey, Rashid, and we were talking about putting the coral in the 2500 as a as an almost last resort yeah, yeah. And, and, and and we actually decided on uh i'll break this news too people have been asking me what lights are you going to go with the 2500 gallon tank what's going on with the 2500 and the answer is we were 
really getting ready. We, the parts were coming shortly. Whatever parts were not coming, we had spares for, for this tank. So we were going to build the panel and start this 2500. Turns out that the automation specialist has emergency surgery December 5th and is going to be out seven weeks. So that backs up that plan. So to get that 2500 running is going to require some, uh, uh, cost, you know, it's going to be some hot wiring, you know? Mm -hmm. That's not going to be the way it's supposed to be, but. Um, and we also decided on lights for the 2500. A lot of people have been asking me what lights you're going to do. Uh, one time we were talking about halides. So one time we were talking about eh, maybe these radions will go down to four feet. What we decided was that there's economies of scale, tremendous economies of scale. And we know that the current lights I'm using, these 500 watt uh, max spec commercial bulbs really work well. Corals are growing amazing. The tips are growing amazing. The colors are amazing. So we're going to order the same lights as in here and just run them at 20, 30 percent capacity. And this way they're interchangeable. Mm -hmm. I have spare parts. Mm -hmm. So I, I could, those lights are coming. I can put them on the 2500. I can take, if I put chloroquine in this tank, we don't need all the lights. I can take it from here, put them on the 2500 for the coral. There's all sorts of things I can do. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm sure I'd imagine that the lighting that you're using in, in the main display tank, if it's the same that you're using in the other tank, if you do end up moving a fish or a coral from point A to point right. B, they're not going to having to get used to a new lighting system. It's because it, it affects them four also. Four feet instead of instead of nine feet. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll just lower the uh, the intensity. I'll run the yep. blues at 50, 60 percent, and the whites at ten if, if I need to. Yeah, so it'll be good and for them also. Good. If we want a little extra blue glitter, we're going to add some Kessels in between. That that's what we're doing. How many how many lights do you have on the big display tank? Thirteen, but two of them two of them are the thousand watt floods. They won't work. So we got eleven of the five hundreds. <sighs> and with chloroquine phosphate, if we go that route, you don't want to light the tank up anyway. So we can move the lights. Yeah. This is an opportunity to think about what you do in the future if it happens again. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is a, this is like a, this is like every aquarist's worst case study on how to deal with this type of emergency. And you know, it, if you think about it, you know, knowing this whole process of how you dealt with it, getting from point A to point B, and all the steps you did in between are actually going to be a really valuable lesson. Not so only look, for you, look, but for the hobby. It's, it's not velvet, and I got no fish drop. It's ick. Good chunk of the time, they, it heals itself. Uh, it burns itself out. When the free swimmers go up through the UV, blah, blah, blah. They build immunity. Am I going to lose some fish in between? Probably. Um, uh, I mean... If it was velvet, I'd be, I'd be diving in right now and pulling them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's still so hard to Andrew. It's so hard to put it in perspective though, because of the, of the, the, the grand nature of the size of this tank. It's not a, it's not a fifty-five gallon tank with a bunch of you know feeder goldfish in it. There's so much, uh, so much emotion, and I'm using that word very specifically. There's so much emotion involved in this whole system. It's not as easy as, well, they're feeder goldfish, you know, flush them down the toilet and let's go to the aquarium. Let's go to PetSmart and buy some more. It's not, yeah, that's not the situation. My, my, my hunch is it's going to be easier to pull the coral. Mm -hmm. Put the lights on the 2500 with a skiver. Uh, mm -hmm. Put one of the engines on with a VFD, you know, a spare VFD. And, uh, and treat the display tank and hope for the best. That, that would be my guess. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that would be my first choice instead of trapping the fish and, and then figuring out whether uh, I went fallow long enough. Gary so said you should... Off. I'm sorry. Gary said you should reach out to Humble Fish. They'd, they'd help you with the issue. Say it again. Gary, Gary Kumbo said you should reach out to Humble Fish. They would help you with the issue. Uh, humble, humble Fish might tell me all those things I just told you. Ozone, diatom powder, feed them vitamins. Uh, hope for the best. Cross your fingers. Um, he may tell me uh, hydrogen peroxide, which is another choice. I'm not a believer that it really works in a display tank, but it's another choice. Um, at least I can keep my UV on. Uh, that, that is a choice, peroxide, by the way. I mean, some people have worked sometimes, sometimes not. Linda said uh, somebody should write a book about the do's and don'ts in a situation like this where you, you started out saying, oh, crap, what's going on with that fish all the way to the point of the solution on the other side and the lessons learned and stuff. And that really might be an interesting, you know, case study for us to put together at some point and put out to the planet because, you know, this yeah. is it's a it's a it's a very, very valuable lesson. Another person asked a question and. And um, don't answer it if you don't want whatever. It's entirely up to you. What, what do you spend? What's your water bill? <laughs> what's your electric bill? And what do you spend on fish food? <laughs> Which are really cool questions because I had the same, you know, I, when, you, when you and I first met, I'm like, hey, man, can I ask you some questions? And it was all about the cost I, of all of this. I, I've actually given some of these numbers out in a couple of the interviews I've done. Yes. So I'm Comfortable giving them out. Um, the water bill, I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, it's like a town or village water bill. It's always been nuts. I think it's. I, I, I don't. I don't even know if it's changed. It's almost like a fixed thing if you live in this town of Old West Bank. Okay. The electric bill before the tank was turned on. The whole house was running me. Oh, by the way, I have two 800 amp meters. So I have 1600 amps in the, in the house. And we had to go that route because they wouldn't give me phase three power. So I had to go to phase one power and do the conversion with the BFDs. The electric bill for the whole house was running, let's call it between four and five, 6,000 a month before the fish tank. It now runs the two, the two uh, combined uh, amps circuits. It's running about 15 or 16,000. So, so I'm guessing that the tank is, not just the tank, all the tanks and the quarantines. Mm. I'm guessing it's running 10,000 a month in electric. In, in food, you know, we get food frozen delivered every two weeks. I'm sure Michelle and Jonathan know what that food bill is, but I don't break it out by food. I break it out by supplies, mm -hmm. including reagents and test kits and, and carbon and rollerfoss and all sorts of things like that. And I believe that number is in the five to 7,000 per month range too, in all supplies. Okay, two more, two more numbers, you ready? Yeah. Cheapest fish. And you'll, you'll know what the next one is after that. The cheapest fish? Probably before Hawaii closed with these yellow things. <laughs> but, but now they turned into Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, like everybody's favorite fish are these sweet lips and they, they cost like 60, 80 bucks. Um, good bang for your buck. I, some of the squanapinas, some of these amphias are not expensive. I love them. They're, 
They're forty bucks, thirty bucks. They got the Antheus have like they're like they're they like they have like a personality. They're like you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah I don't know why, but when you when when I've seen when I've watched them swimming and hanging out and doing their thing, it's like that sucker's got an attitude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really, it, it's about color. It's about okay. Now I want some more orange, so I'll order mm-hmm. some more pennants, or I want more pink, so I want I'll do some pictillas or or bimax. So to me, Antheus or Antheus, and you know, besides getting them through quarantine, they, they do fine in here. Yeah. Other than chloroquine phosphate issue. Okay. Here's here's the other one. I think it was the Picasso, but I'm not sure. Most expensive fish. So personally, I think if I had an auction, the one that would go for the most money would be the, the hybrid could spit blue line because there's only one of a kind. At least we know that that was made in the lab and it can't be duplicated. Now I bought him at a package deal with the ghost bandits. And so, so I didn't pay the full price. I bought him as a big group of fish. Um, everything else though, that's been rare, whether it's the Picasso trigger, the Picasso tang, or those are by angels or the person artist angels. They all range between twenty and thirty thousand dollars each. And, and whether they're twenty or eighteen or fifteen or twenty-five, it's all a matter of the current supply and demand, and it's all bullshit. It's the eye of the beholder, and, and so so to me, it's all it's all the same. It's all the same. Mm. They're, they're twenty plus or minus five to seven thousand. Even the peppermint angels, the same thing. Uh, I haven't, I haven't had a fish that I've had to pay forty or fifty for. I imagine there might be one or two of those that I would do that for, but not much. And they're out there like that. Well, you can't get them, so you can't, so you can't buy them. So mm. if someone came to me with a, a Bellina angel that might go for eighty or a hundred thousand, but. Your plane would get shot down on, on, on the way to, to yeah. The Australian yeah. government would shoot it down. <laughs> so we've been uh, we're we're coming on about an hour. Oh my um, god, we did an hour already. Yeah. So um, let's make believe, God willing, we're all going to pray that all of this works itself out with not too much death and destruction and turmoil and pain what's yeah, what's that, after that by the way, I, I could use some help if anybody has any comments or knows anybody or anything about feeding the fish the chloroquine phosphate um please messenger me because i haven't made uh i know it's a risky proposition but I'm I'm ready to try anything here, uh, except garlic. I, I I think that's just for Dracula. So I'll 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 say it very outwardly and very plainly. Um, we need experience with that. If you have actual experience, yeah, there, there was there's a, a lot riding on Dr. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a company called Doctor G's that made a chloroquine phosphate food. They actually pulled it off the market. The FDA pulled it. I don't know if it was because it was a chloroquine phosphate thing because of COVID or it was killing a fish. I have no idea. Sean said that he's been in the, in the uh, industry as a professional for 16 years. Anybody else that feels that they have valuable experience to lend to Andrew, please reach out to Andrew through the page, send a message. Uh, yeah, messenger. messenger, I can't get yeah, right. Send messenger. a message through Messenger on the page, and um, you, you can count on the fact that he's going to take all of that information, try to figure out what's best for his family and his hobby, and do what he thinks is right. Um, say a prayer, you know. This is we all love this hobby, we love, we love what Andrew does with this. Um, 
but the fact is is that this is tough because we we love we love these we love these living beings you know we play with the Listen, money we play with the money all the time you know but eight, it's not eight, about the eight, money eight coyote rasses one ghost bandit and a case of ick in a display tank it kind of got me down the last two weeks yeah yeah i'm sure Listen, Andrew. I want to. I want to really thank you for doing this. I know that we we usually have a lot of fun doing these, and you know we talked earlier today that it was going to be a little bit more difficult to do today because there's so much going on uh, in the display. Um, but it's important. I mean, I, Al, I'm, I, I, I'm not even sure I want to video the coral that Michelle put in the tank today because. Who knows? In three days, it might be gone. Like, I, you know, I'm, yeah. I, I'm struggling with things like that. Plus, if I put a video up, I can't respond to your comment anyway for 24, 48 hours. So I'm not going to do it. <laughs> be a but good the, boy. <laughs> the, the pieces that she put in today were spectacular. So, yeah, I just, you know, Andrew, this is, you know, we, us fans, us followers, and please remember, everybody that's listening, follow Andrew's YouTube feed, follow his his Instagram feed. Please comment on the page. Let us know that you're out there and enjoying this. If you have experience that you can help support Andrew in this situation, please send a direct message to the page, and he will take all all of that in. Now, as I already see, I, I already have uh, about eight or ten. Uh, Direct messages already coming in, so that's good. I, right. I, I I need some experience, also help. There are people that that have gotten through the ick or something like this in display tanks, and there are those that have not. This these can go either way. Uh, Roland wants to come and sleep over there tonight. <laughs> Who does? <laughs> Roland. <laughs> Roland. <yeah. laughs> oh, well. I don't know. You'd have to get permission from Phoebe. It looks like Phoebe's the, the professional relaxer in the family. Uh, tonight, I'm going to get a massage at uh, 9 o'clock. I'm going to go eat my sashimi and uh, after this and uh, go upstairs. Andrew, we're, our hearts are with you, buddy. You know, just... Thanks. You know, you know that you get so we get so much joy, and you get joy out of us getting joy from this whole extravaganza, this whole experience, this whole thing this this reef experience and on this on the same token we hurt at the same time yeah I feel at it, the same time it, thank god it's 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 been under control so far and this is not a tragedy yet um i, I just don't want this thing out of control boy i would love some new uv bulbs to to zap these things when they become free swimming because I, I know my uv when fully with the full punch, I think I'm up to 300,000 microjoules, and I know that kills free swimming in. I know it does, mm -hmm. but uh, the bulbs are a year old, and, uh, and, and not all the water passes through the UV on the first pass, and fish get, get caught up with it. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen, give me a call. Keep me updated. Um, I'm going to help you watch the feed. See, now Facebook is changing its name from Facebook to Meta. So it, it, you won't be going to Facebook jail anymore. You'll be going to what I heard coined a phrase today called um, metapause. Meta. Metapause. Yeah, you're in metapause. Well, you, know, you know, I went to a, I went to a YouTube cover band and queen cover band on saturday night uh -huh. and a bunch of 55 and 60 year olds were basically in the audience and i saw a lot of menopause too <laughs> <laughs> i love it. i mean i lost it when i saw somebody coined that phrase and it was like <laughs> menopause that's freaking perfect i love it hey listen andrew thanks again so much for doing this we i'll speak for the entire community all of your followers we love doing this. We really do. And we're going to do it more often. Um, yeah, there was, a, there was a lot to update people. And I purposely yeah. haven't posted because I knew I had to break these news. I mean, Casper is gone. And the rat, the, I mean, I guess so many things happened. But you know what? I got my health. I got my dog's health. 
Um, we'll figure this out. We, 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 you know, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get this figured out. Whether, whether it has to take a step backwards before it goes forward is, is, mm-hmm. uh, is the issue. You know, the, the, and the reality of it, Andrew, as sad as it is, life comes with ups and downs. It's not all about the ups. It's about the reality of it, too. And sometimes it just, I'll, I'll just say it outright, sometimes it just sucks. But the, the great majority of the time, it's, you, you it's a You were the pleasure. one that told me the guy that eats vegan and helps, you know, all that, whatever, and then a heart attack, right? Yeah. This was, this, this is literally that. I mean, nobody quarantines more carefully than I do. Um, even after they were, they were medicated, they were in a system with no meds for weeks. I watched them. I saw nothing. If it was the new fish and the stress of the new bandits, who, who knows what it was? Right. So you, I mean, you only try to identify the source so, for two reasons. One, so you can avoid the source. And secondly, so you can get through it in, in a, a more less damaging way. Other than that, just no, it's futile trying to figure out exactly, how, exactly to the letter how it happened. So the only reason, in my opinion, to know is so that you don't make the same mistake again. Exactly. O- other than that, there's no other reason. Right. Yep. All right. Hey, Andrew, thank you so much. It's been an honor and a pleasure again. Everybody, I'm please happy to comment. Talk to everybody. Please comment, have, have, stay safe, have happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, yeah, thanks, have, happy New thanks, Year. Thanks, too. Don't eat too much turkey. I've already overdosed on turkey. I'm done with it for another freaking year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I did, did that already. Send, send the crew all of our love and, and support, Andrew, okay? Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Go get that thanks massage. Well, you everybody. earned it, my friend. Nice to see everybody. Contact me a messenger. That's right. Please send help to send help about the bulbs and suggestions about the chloroquine to Andrew. And by the please. way, I'm, I'm not blocked on Instagram, so so I could do some some videos there. Yep. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, guys. Bye bye.